Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to walk you through how to set up and use the Prism Lens Photo Effect for Photoshop. So this item consists of a Photoshop action and various light effect texture overlays that we can use to quickly build effects like this inside Photoshop. So if you want to download and try it out for yourself, just head down into the description and click on the very first link. So you can download that and start building these kind of effects. Alright, here's a couple more examples. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is just open up the photo that you wanna work with. Next, we need to load the Photoshop action that was included in the download. So there's two ways we can load the action. Firstly, you can go to the window menu, select actions. Inside the actions panel here, just click on this top right-hand corner icon, down to load actions. Then select the ATN file that was included in the download. Okay, that's the first way. Another way you can load the action is just to navigate to where you Download the file, double click on the ATN file from here, and it will pop up inside Photoshop. From here, all you need to do is select this first action here, Play Me, you select that, then click the play button. Uh, but before doing that, I'll just mention that you cannot rename the action here, otherwise the whole action will break. And I've just got a note here, don't play any action below here. So all these, these are the workings of the action, so that you don't need to touch any of those or, or rename them. Uh, for now, we just want to play this one. The create color options action we can use after we've played the initial action here. So select play me and then click this button, the play button there. And that's all you need to do. So from here, the action takes about one minute to complete. So I will just skip the video ahead and we'll get to the result. So when the action's finished, you'll notice that not much has changed yet. Uh, that is because we need to start turning on these folders in the layer panel here. So I'm just going to hide the actions panel and to collapse these folders, I always like to use the shortcut Control alt or Command option and then just click on this folder arrow here. That quickly just collapses the folder. It's a really handy shortcut to, to use. And so the way I've set this up is that all you need to do is just select one of these folders, turn on the visibility, and then start moving the folder around. And you can see what's happening there. Now, uh, the components of this folder are the same across all three. So as I explained, watch it what each one of these does. It's the same applies to the other folders as well. So we'll start off with this folder and I'll just jump down to the bottom layer here. Uh, P3, just the P3 just stands for Prism, Prism 3. So main image. So this is the one you want to definitely move around. So I always jump to this layer first. So select that, then start moving around so you can reposition where it is in your Prism. So for this, for this example, I might just put it here. Okay, and then the second one I like to jump to is this layer here, second reflection image. So as I move this one around, you can see there's actually a second copy of our photo that we can move around within that one prism. So I can reposition that. And you'll notice that the layer below is the reflection area. So you can select that one, move that around so you can reposition where that second reflection appears. So if we just jump back down to the main image layer here, you can see I've got in brackets, move, rotate, or scale. So you're not limited to just having uh, your image be in this position or this scale. Uh, you can zoom out, so control or command minus. Uh, you can scale it up, control or command T, and just make some changes there to the scale. You can also flip it around, so you can go to edit, transform, flip horizontal, or flip vertical. Uh, control command T again, you can rotate it. So definitely experiment with, with that, with your main image. Now these three layers above are the green, blue, and red color offsets. So you can see as I zoom in a bit, you can see these this variation of color here. So that's coming from these three layers here. So if I turn those off, you can see they're gone. So I kind of felt that add a little bit to the effect. Uh, so that's up to you if you want to keep them on. but. One thing to note about this is that if I move the layer around, the main image, you'll see that uh, the colors move around with it, which is good. But uh, what if you want to control the position or the opacity of those uh, colors individually? So what you'll notice, if you select this bottom layer here, all these layers are linked. You can see the link symbol. Now, if you shift select all of these, right click and go unlink layers, this just means that we can move around those colors uh, independently. So you can reposition the blue, red or yellow layers. 
Okay, but just be wary that once you've moved them around, if you go to move your main image again, you can see that those colors don't move around with your main image. So what you might want to do is just shift select them all again, right click, then relink the layers here. So now when you move the main image around or any one of these layers, they all move in sync. Now this layer here, prism area brightness, if you want to brighten up your entire prism area, you want to double click on this layer and this bottom handle here, you want to just drag this to the right a bit, okay? So I would avoid using this one here to brighten it up. You can if you want, but I just found that this created a bit more of a realistic looking effect by dragging this to the right. So just be, just take note that I did actually add some brightness by default. So when you click on it, it'll be double click on this, it'll be somewhere around here. So you can take that off or you can increase it to increase the brightness, it's up to you. This layer here, second reflection brightness. If you want to brighten up the area of your second reflection here, so this image here, you can just double click on this layer and you can just experiment with adjusting the brightness here. Okay. So it just adds a bit of variation to the lighting throughout your prism. By default, I've had it up, I do have it up a little bit, so just be wary of that. Now, if you want to increase the area where your second image is visible throughout the prism, so you can see it's kind of restricted to this layer here and uh, the pixels on this layer. So if I just grab my brush out, B, and you can just grab just a soft round brush from general brushes. And if I just brush any, any color onto this layer, you can see that I'm increasing the area where the second image is visible. So if you want to get an idea of where this image is currently visible, you can hold down control or command and then click on that layer. So that'll make a selection out of it. So you can see that this is roughly where uh, your image is visible. You can also see that uh, on the mask of this layer here, the, se the second ref reflection brightness, if you hold down older option and click on that mask, this also reveals where uh, you are brightening up that second image. So these two layers are linked. So wherever you move this layer around, uh, the area that gets brightened is always in sync with this layer here. So just keep in mind that you can brush more area onto this layer here if you want to increase the visibility of your second image here. Or you can use the mask here and brush black onto this layer, onto this layer mask to hide where it's showing. So there is quite a bit of control uh, you have on uh, that second image reflection. Next, let's go over how I've set this folder up and talk about the mask that I've set up here on the folders. So, uh, like I mentioned before, to reposition the prism, all you have to do is move this folder around. But one thing you'll notice that when you've run the action, the shape of the prism is randomized every time. So if you hold down Alt or Option and click on the mask here, you can see that the area of the prism is restricted to white. Now, every time you run the action, this shape is randomized, okay? And so everything inside this folder here, all these layers here will only be visible within this white area. Now, if you run the action and you generate a shape that you don't like, okay? All you need to do is select the mask. You can hold down older option and click on it to view it like this. Then hit B, grab your brush tool out. And if I wanna hide an area, I can just brush black, okay? But if I want to increase the area, I can brush white. So I'll just click away for this a moment. So I'm going to select the mask. If I hit B, uh, make sure white is my active color, I can increase the area of this prism just by brushing white. So you can see that there. If I hit X on the keyboard to flip that to black, I can then remove. Okay. So you can see on these other folders here, if I hold down older option click, you can see the shape generated on those. Okay. Another thing you can do if you just want to experiment with different prism area shapes is just to run the action again. So you can just shift select all these layers and folders here, hit delete. So all you're left with is your original image to open the actions panel, select play me and then click the play button. And then that will generate a new set of folder shapes here. So the last thing to cover here on the folder setup is this layer style that I've applied to each folder. So you'll notice that uh, on the on the perimeters of the folder shapes, you'll see there's like a little bit of a light sweep happening around the edges. Now this is coming from this effects layer style here. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that there. Now if that is appearing too strong on your prism shapes, all you need to do is just double click on the bevel and emboss uh, 
words there and that will bring up the layer style window and you can just adjust the opacity of these two settings down the bottom here so highlight and shadow mode uh, you can just decrease those that will bring down the overall opacity or if you want to increase it just do the opposite let's turn that up so you can see that there so let's go ahead and turn on the visibility for prism area 2 and i'm just going to zoom out control or command minus and i'm going to select the folder here and i'm just going to reposition this to somewhere that i think looks good maybe somewhere around there so i'm going to go inside this folder down to the main image and i'm going to start moving this around now what i might do with this one is i'm going to zoom out further and i'm going to rotate this so control or command t i'm going to move my mouse outside of the bounding box here to get the rotate uh, tool up and I'm just going to start rotating this maybe something like that give that a second control or command zero to zoom back in that looks pretty good I like the light sweeps happening up the top here so next I'm going to jump to the second image reflection because I can see that um, it's it's not appearing through this light area here which has been lit up by the second uh, reflection brightness layer here so you can see that there so what i'm going to do i'm just going to grab the second reflection image and i'm just going to reposition this maybe just something like that that will do and i don't think we will need prism area one but we'll we'll just turn it on and we'll let's move this somewhere maybe somewhere down here i'll go inside this folder let's move this one around Maybe something like that. So what we're gonna do now is import one of the light effect overlay textures that were included in the download. And this is just gonna help uh, bring everything together. So what you wanna do firstly is select the top visible layer here. So this smudge layer. I'll explain what this layer does soon. But select the top one and you wanna to go to file, place embedded, or use the shortcut, hold down old or option FL. So alt FL. And in the, uh, where you downloaded the files, there will be a folder called Prism Light Textures. Go inside there, and there's a bunch of different textures I created. And just pick one. So just double click, and it will, learn, it will then come into Photoshop with their bounding box around it. So you might want to zoom out, Control or Command minus, zoom out. Then grab these corners, hold down Older Option plus Shift. That'll scale it uniformly. Scale it over your, uh, your photo and then hit control and command zero zoom back in and what you want to do is just change the blend mode from normal to screen and that will just knock out all the blacks so that all that we're left with is the color and so we'll do that now one thing you want to experiment with this layer so first thing you definitely want to take a look at is the position of it so i actually want this to be perhaps the other direction so i can um, basically flipped vertically. So I can go to edit, transform, uh, flip vertical, or if you want a, a little tip with shortcuts to get to those, if you have, now I'm not sure if this works on a Mac, but on a PC, uh, if you hold down alt, you'll see that uh, there's underscores appear under the letters in the menu here. So we want to get to the edit menu, transform, and then flip vertical. So if I hold down alt, you can see that E is highlighted. So by hitting firstly Alt, then E, you can see that down under Transform, A is highlighted, and then down the bottom here, V is highlighted. So if we go through those steps, firstly we hit Alt, plus E, and then A, and then V, and that will flip it vertically. Now if I wanted to flip it horizontally, it's Alt, E, A, H. So it's just a much faster way than going through this menu option every time just to quickly see how the texture will look rotated. So if I wanted to flip it 90 degrees, that's Alt E A 9. And if you get these hard edges here after you've rotated, you just want to zoom out, Control Command T, and then just scale that up. Okay, Control Zero, zoom back in. But let's go with Alt E A V, flip it vertically, and that looks pretty good. Now let's just say that you've imported your texture and you want to experiment with different ones. What you could do is just right click over the texture here then go down to replace contents and then simply select a, another texture just like that and then that will update in the design 
But let's just say you want to experiment with a couple, okay? So you, you think this one looks pretty good, but you want to see if there's other ones that could look a bit better. So what I like to do is just right click on this layer, then go to new smart object via copy. And I'll turn this one off for the moment. And then I'll replace this one, replace contents. And then just select, uh, let's just go with this one. Okay, so now what I can do, I can, I can flip back and forth between this one and this one, and then get a feel for which one I prefer, or you can just combine the both of them. So I can grab this one, maybe flip this one around. Okay, and you can of course mask out any area you don't want. So let's say this, uh, this bit of light in the middle here, I don't want that. So I will just apply a mask to the layer by hitting this icon, select the mask, hit B, grab your brush out, select black, and if you brush onto the mask with black, we're gonna hide the contents of that layer. Now, something else that I like to do with these textures is uh, adjust the brightness and contrast of them. So for example, this texture here, you can see by um, by adding this texture, it's added like a, like a white light over our photo here. So one way to reduce that and to say, boost the colors up some more is just to apply a simple levels adjustment layer. So I'll select the layer here, go to image adjustments levels. And if I drag this middle handle to the right, that will reduce a lot of that white light. And if I then increase, if I grab this handle, and bring this to the left, that will boost up the visibility of the colors, uh, basically everything else that remains. Okay, so if I click okay to that, and if I turn the levels on and off here, you can see the before and after. Now you might like that uh, that white light effect, uh, but this is definitely an option if you just wanna fine tune the texture some more. So next we are gonna take a look at the create color options action here. So I'm just gonna turn this top uh, texture on. So the way this works is that you just select it, you click the play button, and what this will do, this will stack 30 color options here at the top of the lay order. And the way they work is that you just turn the visibility on for the layer and that will apply the color option. So let's just wait for this to finish. Okay, it's done. So I've just, at the end, there's just a few tips that I'm uh, giving you here. So you just click continue on that and it's collapsed the actions panel. So when you twirl open the color options folder, you can see all the color options are here. Now you want to use that shortcut again of control alt or command option Then click on the arrow next to this folder icon, click on that, release the keys and reopen the folder. Everything is collapsed. So the way this works is that, yeah, you just turn on the visibility for one of the folders here and that will apply the color option. Now you don't need to apply it at 100% opacity. So you can just click on the word opacity here and drag that down. There's zero, there's a hundred. So you can use say 30, 50%, whatever you want to use. And, but what I also like to do is combine it with other color options. So I might turn on number 10 here and I will just decrease the opacity on this one and just apply a little bit of that color. And then maybe I'll just experiment with, uh, turn on another one and turn the opacity down for that and applying a little bit of that color option. Now, one thing to be wary of with the color options is that if you don't want the, the light texture overlays to be influenced by the color, you want to just drag those above the color options folder, just like that. So that way they don't adopt the colors. But if you do, just make sure the color options are up the top. So you can see, if I just do it before and after there, you can see the difference. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the smudge layer here. Now, if you have uh, folders and layers above the smudge layer, I recommend just dragging this to the top if you plan on uh, smudging your image. So the way this works is that we're going to just import the brush that's included in the download. So if you hit B, uh, that'll grab the brush tool and then right click anywhere over your photo. That'll bring up the brushes panel. Select this icon, go to import brushes and then just double click on the prism lens smudge brush that's included. So, and if you go inside this folder here, there is a brush. So just select that. Now if this is selected, when you start clicking and dragging around your photo, you can see how it all smudges together. So this is kind of cool if you want to distort your reflected image a bit more. So I could just click up here and sort of just drag that out in a direction, or maybe there's something you want to do between the edge of the prism and your photo here. Uh, so we can sort of blend, you can see as I'm smudging that 
kind of creating a a nice blend between the prism and the original photo. So you can sort of go in and just add some extra effects. So I can just drag all this to make it look like uh, it's warping around the prism. Of course, you don't have to do this. It's really just there to experiment with if you want. So that covers everything you need to easily create this prism photo effect in Photoshop. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next tutorial.